I've had the rare pleasure of interviewing our next guest before, and she filled me to the brim with a dastardly love, acerbic, funny as Laurel and Hardy moving a piano, possessed of a voice, sensuous and scabrous. She and her band have been banging out the hits for 26 years. 17 million album sales. Count them. Can't be wrong. They're back with a new one called No Gods, No Masters. It is out on Friday. It's Garbage's Shirley Manson. Hello. Hello. What an intro. My God. I, I felt that you, it required it. You know, you're a, you're a, you're a, <laughs> you are, um, you're a legend and you need to be built up. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't think 17 million sounds right. It must be at least 17.3, I'm thinking. I don't think 17 million sounds right at all. <laughs> what do you think it should be? Higher or lower <laughs> than that? Be, I think it should be much less. But I don't know. <laughs> I love, I've been reading up a lot. You know, I mean, it, you, uh, unless you didn't say this, it's, it's, you said that you guys always keep a close eye on the band coffers. You know, on what's coming in, like more than perhaps some bands, is that sort of to make you a bit more independent from the industry doing that? Yeah, we just have always been really careful, you know, like we haven't gone out and bought like rock star cars or huge houses or anything like that. You know, we've just been very canny with our money, as my mum used to say. So um, we always invested back into the band so that we always had a recording fund, even when record labels were uninterested you know so we were independent in that sense well because that's the thing isn't it you've you, you you've got garbage over here you've got your audience over there and it's the conduit sometimes isn't it you know you you know you've got an audience that you need to supply this stuff with and so maybe it's just a good thing not to always have to rely on record company goodwill isn't it i suppose well yeah i mean because sometimes you don't have a record you know they, yeah. they, they don't want you so you know, it's always best to have a record company in some regards because they really are, you know, they're a great distribution system and, and they're more powerful than when you're an independent on your own. It's yeah. really hard, you know, when you're an independent band to get, to get your head above the parapet. And, and record companies do help you do that. Yeah. But they're not always there and they don't always want you, so you need to, like, keep going. Th this is it. I mean, I, I know the thing is, God's No God's No Masters is your, is your seventh album, right? And that's yeah. a, and we're into numerology here. Seven sins, uh, seven brides, seven brothers. The song Seven by Prince. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the decks through some more. Seven up is a nice drink. Um, Pelly yeah. and Dag Leash were the number seven. So you say numerology is a bit significant. What 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 is seven in numerology? Do some numbers really contain an innate power? Do you think, Shirley? Well, I was really sort of tongue in cheek when I said that in the bio. Um, <laughs> Although I do believe in lucky number seven and I was excited to put out a seventh record and, you know, Seven Brides, Seven Brothers. Um, it also has a lot of biblical, signif biblical significance yeah. and it also uh, represents sort of reinvention and, and rebirth. Yeah. And I don't know, I just thought it was a fun thing to say and now I'm really regretting it. Because idiots Cause like me. I don't me. know anything about numerology. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot! It's, 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 oh, it's always the, in, the the interviewer on the back foot, isn't it? Well, I've, I've read in the press release that you're into numerology. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I was just having a little bit of fun with you. But, yeah, well, I'm an idiot because I know that happens, and yet I continue to open my big fat mouth. Yeah, you, you know, can't. It's all neat. You can't help it. But this is it. No gods, no masters. No. Here we go. Here's a bit. Another basic question, Claxon Here. What? Where is the album title from? Where? What? Where, where, where did that particular set of words come from for you? Well, it's an old, it's an old saying from like 1880, I think, by a Frenchman whose name escapes me. You put me on the spot. It's been used by everyone over the years, you know, um, from the feminists to the anarchists to the punk, um, and now garbage. And it basically just sort of represents. You know, equality, egalitarianism for us, you know, that everyone is born equal and should be treated equally. And of course, they're not. But so it's sort of a bit of a protest statement about wanting everyone to be treated with respect, you know? Yeah, because we've moved. I mean, and obviously we'll get onto this a little bit. We've moved, we seem to have moved from, uh, you know, a sort of liberalism to a libertarianism almost, haven't we? And egalitarianism has been sort of pushed to the sidelines a little bit, hasn't it? Politically, it feels. Yeah, yeah, it's a sort of uh, considered a bit of a naive uh, perspective yeah. of naive philosophy, but I believe in it wholeheartedly, you know. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it, I, I love the, the the quote that is attributed to you. We couldn't just sit 
and make a party record. And it's not, is it? The themes are, are pretty massive on this, aren't they? Since you last put a record out, we've had we've had Trump, we've had Brexit, we've had the rise of the far right, we've had George Floyd. You you are kind of tackle, tackling some of this lyrically on the record, aren't you? Yeah, we are. I mean, it's a complex record. It's not an easy record. When we presented it to our managers, I was like, just be warned, this is not an easy record to listen to. It's not a feel-good record necessarily, um, although I love it. Um, it makes me feel good. Yeah. But um, yeah, the theme, there are a lot of uh, somewhat challenging themes on it. Um, but I, in all due conscience, I just couldn't stand by and not comment on what I saw was going on around me. Yeah. I just, I just making a party record or a throwaway pop record at this point in my life, I just couldn't do it. Well, that's saying you've not. I mean, and, but like you say, you've still you're still using that wonderful palette that that I think you know you draw on really when you're all together. Um, you know, so there's that sort of industrial inflection and a bit of trip hop, but there's always pop and there's always that honeyed part of your voice over the top of it. So it, it really sweetens the deal. But the men who rule the world is not everybody wants to rule the world, is it, Shirley? It's you're going for the throat there, aren't you? Tell us a little bit about that one. <laughs> well, I mean, as as bold and, and uh, spiteful as it sounds, it's actually a retelling of, of the age old biblical tale of Noah's Ark, except it's reimagined as a sci fi uh, feature film wow. where I come down from outer space with George Clinton in his <laughs> mothership and we save everything that's beautiful and divine and lovely and we leave all the corruption and the wickedness on Earth and we head off back up to whatever planet we came from. God, that's almost <laughs> like, that. that's like a mix of Independence Day and a bit of Scientology in the sort of just for a, a bit no, of no, a no, laugh. No, 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 Sean, no, no Scientology. I live in America. No, very wrong. Don't even joke about that. Okay, um, that's the, the, it's, you, somebody should be in contact with Netflix about this because I can see this being at least a twenty-four parter, surely. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's a big theme. But I do feel like you know we've got to a point where we're all looking at the governments all over the globe, and they are run predominantly by men. And mm. I feel like men have been given centuries and centuries to get this right. They keep messing it up. Yeah. Let's get some more voices from all different walks of life, genders, you know, religions, et cetera, et cetera, and get us all on board so that everyone's represented uh, fairly and we can actually solve some of these ridiculous issues that we're all faced with on a daily basis. Desperate. For, I mean, it's like the Rainbow Connection. It's like that song, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's it, 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 Without question, <laughs> things... You, yes. What you've said is completely right. We've just the the direction we're moving in is just it's not really working for most people, is it? I mean, no, I don't think so. And you've always been vocal anyway on, on especially on the power imbalance, like in the music business and in the world, sort of in general, really. And so, on a song like Godhead, talk me through that a bit. Is it is this a woman imagining being a man? Is it about men checking their privilege? Is is some some of that going down? I think it's about all of that, you know, I mean, it's about a lot of things. It started off kind of tongue in cheek, you know, because I am aware that I get treated very differently from my male counterparts in the band. You know, the boys get accorded a lot of respect just by being male. And I thought this was really sort of, when I was younger, I found it infuriating. Now that I'm older, I find it funny. Do you still, do you still get underestimated even at this juncture of your stellar career? Does that still happen? I still get even asked if I consider myself a musician. I mean, it's bizarre. Uh, at this point, after, you know, I get it. Like, when we first came out, I was young, unproven. I was working with, like, you know, an amazing producer like Boots, you know, who was w respected worldwide, had come off making incredible, you know, music scene-changing records. I get why people were suspicious of me and didn't really give me any time of day, but now I'm like, come on, yeah. what is it you want from me? What, what do I have to do? You know? But I do think it's changing. I think the new generations of people coming up, male, female, and, and, and uh, non-binary, they're, they're all way yeah. more switched on than we ever were. They're way smarter and like not willing to put up with the rubbish that we've yeah. put up with for years. That, that you, you're, you're right. They were in the midst of our loud and proud season here for Pride as well this week, so it's you know it's, it's course, timely yeah. that we're talking about it. Well, let, let's break for a track of the album. Uh, we, 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 we should give people uh, a little sampler of what what to be expecting uh, when uh, No Gods No Masters comes out on Friday.
words to obey. Oh, we're back with uh, Shirley Manson talking about the new album, uh, the new garbage album, No Gods, No Masters. You do there's some cover versions on the extended version, and you do a cover of Bowie's Starman. Did you worry about doing a version of that? Because that's almost like karaoke classic level of Bowie, isn't it? It is, and I did. I was concerned, but I think we 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 thought about it long and hard. We got invited by Howard Stern to be part of his tribute to David Bowie, mm. and we really felt it would be ridiculous to turn such a gorgeous opportunity to pay homage to one of our heroes uh, to turn that down. So we took a stab at it, and then we were really happy with how it turned out. It's um, beautiful. It, 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 yeah, it is beautiful. Thank you. And it, you know, the, the, the sort of almost imagine you as it's almost like you're singing it as the teenage you. For some reason, that's the way it struck me. You know, in the verses in particular, it's sort of so ethereal and and beautiful. But and and then you know, sort of a, a straight homage in places as well. I think it's really nice how you've mixed it up. Did you did you ever beat? I've got to ask the question. Did you meet David? I did, yeah, what, I did. What was it yeah, like? Was it? What was the experience? I, lo- I lost my mind. I was like a sort of headless chicken. I couldn't even really function properly. You know what I mean? I was like, there was so much noise in my head and I was just looking at him and he was so beautiful and it was intense and amazing and I don't know. I mean, he, I, I've been obsessed with him since I was a kid and I love what you just said about our cover version because that's exactly how I felt when I was recording that vocal call. I felt in touch with myself when I fell in love with them, and it was a really, it felt like a just such an intimate moment for me in in my career. Oh, I'm, I'm, it really does come across that on the recording. But it's funny the number of people that I've asked that question of, and they they basically all responded in the same way. You know, I was I was all over the place. It, I'm just imagining what it must be like to be somebody like Bowie, or perhaps people like Prince or Joni Mitchell, or Shirley Manson, when people meet you you just become insensible, you know. It's, it must be quite a strange... <laughs> but it must be quite a strange life to live that you can't really walk anywhere that people sort of falling over, falling off bikes and, you know, running into sheds. Yeah, well, I've certainly seen people react to, you know, people, you know, really famous people that I've been around, you know, and, and how strangely they behave. But I think everyone understands that, you know, because every musician, no matter how famous they are, they've had their fan moment as well, so... Everybody understands it's just a weird experience, you know, when yeah. fantasy sort of meets reality. So I it think is. you can cut yourself a break and everyone else can too. Yeah, I mean, it happens to me all the time, you know. I mean, the news agent's getting a paper <laughs> and it's like, I can't believe it's Sean Keaveney and it, can I touch you? I'm like, I suppose so, but actually... <laughs> Maybe it's not that appropriate at the moment. And so, and this is it. And so, do you, do you, we're, you, we're, the tour's going to be amazing. Do you, Duke, Stephen, Butch, get on like a well-oiled machine when on tour? Do you get on each other's wicks? How, how is it going to work? You know, will you get to, to, to month three and think, we should not bothered? I don't know. You know, I can't speak for the, the rest of the band, but I love being on tour. And I love my band. You know, they get on my nerves, as I do them. Family. I fully imagine. Um... But I love them and they're important to me and they're my brothers and we do everything together, you know, in terms of our of our work. So I need them and they need me and, you know, we struggle through and we get there in the end and that's all that matters, really. It's it's great. It's just such a... I, I love the confluence of influences, you know, that sort of, like I said, that industrial, almost like prodigy-esque sometimes where you get these like bluesy licks underneath and you get your voice over the top and, it's, and, and the pop's just running through it like a seam. It's just... It's really brilliant, and, and, and we're so glad that you're back uh, with No Gods, No Masters out on Friday, the 11th of June. Pink vinyl for Record Store Day, neon green vinyl as well. So that's exciting yeah. as well, got to be said. I think so, I think so. So we, we, we get out to the record stores on Record Store Day if you want your pink vinyl version. Um, Shirley Manson, a pleasure, a privilege. Thank you very much for joining us today and, t- and talking to us about the record. It's my absolute pleasure. I want you to be my new best friend. Well, I, I think we've already minted that relationship. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. I appreciate it. Always prevalent, always relevant. Six Music is loud and proud.